Welcome to part two of this message. This is part two, and I just pray that in Jesus' name that what I will say will be a blessing to you. I quoted from that great scripture over in the Old Testament, Second Chronicles 7.14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Pastor, I, I want to talk directly to you. When's the last time that you've gotten on your knees, whether it be at the church and the altar, whether it be beside your bed in your bedroom, or knelt down beside your, your, your lazy boy recliner in your home, or maybe just in the woods around your house, or going down the highway you had to pull the car over and to seek, seek the Lord about the condition that you're in. I know that you were going to, you, you're going to think that I was going to say the condition of the church. Yes, yes, I, and, and I will say that, but let me say this first. The condition of the church is because of you and I. It's, it's the heads. It's, it's, it's the leadership of the body of Christ. It has nothing to do with what Obama's doing. It, it, it had nothing to do with what President Bush was doing in the White House or any other president from day one that America was founded. America, as you know, was founded on godly principles. America was founded on the Word of God, the King James Bible, thus saith the Lord. But the problem is not the body of Christ. The body is only led by the head. And the body can go nowhere without the head. So, Pastor, you and I have a problem, and the problem is you and me. We've got to get back to where God wants us to be. We've got to get back where we used to be with God, if we were ever there in the first place. I'm, I'm not saying that you're not saved, no, sir. I'm not saying that you're not called of God, no, sir. But I am saying this. The church is in trouble. And I say this with a broken heart. The church is in trouble. As an evangelist, I get to see these things. As I've traveled, I've traveled around and I've, I've seen with my own eyes, I've, I've heard with my own ears the things that are taking place behind the pulpits of our churches in America. Not just America, but around the world today. We've gotten cold, we've gotten callous, we've gotten unconcerned. We've, we just don't care anymore about souls. When's the last time, Pastor, that, that you've cried hot tears streaming from your eyes, asking God to change you, asking God to take that which is wrong in your heart, in your life, to cleanse you, to set you free from it. When's the last time that you cried out to God from a true heart of repentance and said, God, it's not my brother, it's not my sister that stands in need of deliverance or help or prayer, it's me. When's the last time that you've said those prayers and meant every word that you said? Pastor, we've got to go and weep between the porches. We've got to spend time alone with God. We've got to have that intimacy with Jesus. We, we've got to have that that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. We've gotten too busy. We've gotten too, if you will, religious on, 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 on the Lord. We, 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 we've canceled Jesus out of our messages. We, we, we tell stories now. We tell jokes behind the pulpit. We, 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 we say one thing and do another. We say one thing and live another way. Our lives are not lining up with the Word of God. Our, 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 our lives are not copacetic, if you will, with God. God has a controversy, not only with Israel, but, but God has a controversy with me and with you. We've got to cry out to God. We've got to get back. We've got to get back serving God. And telling the people that Jesus is coming. We've got to get back and telling the people 
telling not only the church, the body of Christ, but the sinners, the, the world at large, that Jesus Christ is soon to come. His return is very close. We've got to get back to preaching the Word of God. Oh, oh, we've replaced the Word of God with the New King James. We've re replaced His Word with the NIV, with, with, with good news for, for modern man. There's only one good news for modern man, and it's still the King James Bible. It's still, thus saith the Lord. Preacher, listen to me. Listen. Listen to me, my brother. Listen to me. Don't you sense the urgency of God? You know God's been talking to you. You know the Spirit of God's been wooing you, and He's been sending you, if you will, SOS signals, distress signals, saying, come back to me. Follow on your knees. Let go of the things of this world. My brother, you've preached it. I've preached it. I still preach it. I hope that you still preach it. First John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Friend, listen to me. We've, we've, we've got this love of the world going on in our hearts. We've replaced the love of Jesus and the love of God and the love of the Spirit of God with the love of this world. We're carnal. And, and, and we're dead. We've gone back. We, we've walked away from God and, and we're preaching everything under the sun. We're preaching what we shouldn't be preaching. We're saying things we shouldn't be saying. We're going where we shouldn't be going. We're watching what we shouldn't be watching. We're hearing what we shouldn't be hearing. We're touching what we shouldn't be touching. Our feet are going where we shouldn't be going. And God has written on the wall, on the walls of our heart, He's written Ichabod, for the glory of the Lord hath departed. Oh, but I'm here to tell you there is a way back to God. There is a way back to God. And it's if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Pastor, I say that with tears in my eyes. I say what I say to you with tears in my eyes and a broken heart. I've seen firsthand, I've seen firsthand the garbage behind the pulpits. I've seen firsthand the mess that's behind the four walls of our church. The church is the body of Christ. I've seen the sin. I've felt the jealousy. I've heard the lies. Brother Pastor, all you have is a playhouse. You can have the best preaching behind the pulpit. You can have the anointed singing you that you that the church could ever wish for. You can have the choir sing in perfect harmony. Everything be going the way it should be going. But if you, the one that proclaims the Lord Jesus Christ that has called you to preach, if your heart ain't right with God, it's all for nothing. It's in vain what you do. Oh, I've got so much to say. I've got so much to say. But I believe that you feel what I feel. I believe that you feel the urgency of God's Spirit. I believe that you feel the urgency of repentance. And any sin that's not stopped and repented of has not been forgiven. He said, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Listen, Pastor. Listen to me. Listen to what God's saying to you. I know what He's saying to me. Listen to what He's saying to you, to us. If our sins have not been turned away from, then there's been no forgiveness, and there is no forgiveness. Come back to Him. Please, Pastor, come back to Jesus. He's calling you. Souls are at stake. The blood, the blood will be on your hands if we preach not the gospel, if we preach not the truth. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Let's get back to God. Let's come back to Jesus. Let's come back to the truth, the life, and the way.
Let's forget about isms and schisms and let's get back to preaching the Word of God. Let our hearts and our minds and, and our souls, everything that we have, let it all be the way that God meant and means it to be. We've got to, Pastor.